Representatives from the 20 richest nations in the world met in Bali, Indonesia today to discuss a resolution to the crisis but failed to find common ground. Contributing writer Mark Diano is currently reporting on the ground in Ukraine. And J Spotlight News anchor Brianna Venosi spoke with him on Wednesday from Kyiv about the ongoing situation there. Mark, this is a critical mission that you're on. Describe to me what it has been like traveling through these different villages in Ukraine. Well, it's devastation like you've never seen. And I covered uh, Hurricane Sandy pretty extensively where I saw homes toppled over and, um, you know, uh, knocked off their foundations and destroyed. This is uh, uh, unbelievable in terms of the burning, um, you know, the, what the damage that these missiles uh, do uh, in the areas that I've been in. Uh, clearly, uh, the Russians were using cluster bombs because, uh, you know, there would just be, they, they didn't miss anything. Uh, I was in a village today where uh, every home was destroyed. Every single home was made in uninhabitable. Uh, or uh, flat out destroyed. And it was a village of about 800 people that now has um, maybe a dozen people living in there, in there now. And yet there is this need for life to go on. What type of uh, goods are you bringing? What are folks asking for there? Well, mostly uh, it's food, uh, hygiene items, and um, you know, uh, household uh, effects, pots and pans, dishes, you know, the stuff, <laughs> all the stuff we take for granted uh, is what they need, uh, basically. Um, and um, it, it's amazing to see uh, what they make do with. Uh, I was in several places today where the people are now living in either garden sheds or their barns or some outbuilding and they've moved all their stuff in there. They have a working kitchen. Uh, you know, they, uh, they have uh, working uh, uh, toilets. Uh, you know, they, they, it, the human resolve and resilience is humbling to see. I know, Mark, that the Whippany Ukrainian Center had a lot to do with New Jersey's part of sending aid. What is still needed? Uh, just because this isn't maybe front and center in the headlines. I mean, this is a dire situation. Well, everything is still needed. And uh, I'm actually working with uh, an organization called Stop the Bleed, uh, the Stop the Bleed Coalition. Uh, they are sending, um, you know, traumatic bleeding first aid kits uh, because, uh, you know, not only for military use, but because of these Russian random uh, strikes uh, in places like Kiev and then the bombardment that they're doing on the in the Eastern Front, every single citizen has the potential to be a first responder. You know, you could be in your apartment building someplace and a missile comes in and suddenly you're needed to put a tourniquet on uh, one of your neighbors. So there is that aspect of it, you know, um, you know, medical supplies are needed, bandages, uh, stuff for the military is needed. Uh, everything is needed, really. I mean, it, there is no shortage of need. Yeah, I know you're documenting your time there, writing about it. Um, in one of the pieces that I know you're, you're writing now, you talked about the fact that this village you were in just earlier today, there was no occupation by Russian forces because it was essentially wiped off the map. Right, There's, there was nothing to occupy. Uh, they blew up almost every single house except for a small uh, stretch of, of homes. Um, and, um, you know, the, the Ukrainians took it back, the Russians took it back, and then the Ukrainians took it back. So, yeah. you know, these, whatever they didn't get destroyed on the first wave got destroyed in the uh, second and third uh, rounds of fighting in this village. I think the resolve uh, of these people is what sits with me the most as I look at your work um, and the work of other folks who have gone to deliver aid. What are your conversations like? What is next for those who are returning home, who are fortunate enough to be alive? Um, what well, is next? 
Well, in this place where everything is destroyed, what's next is tomorrow. Uh, how do you get through tomorrow? Um, does Are the tomatoes ready to pick from the garden? Uh, do you have enough uh, food to get through the day? Um, now, in places where uh, people are returning to homes that are intact or homes that were never uh, bombarded, uh, life has been pretty much, uh, you know, can be normal to some extent. But in, in these places where the Russians are basically doing uh, carpet bombing and, and destroying places with heavy artillery, uh, it, it's a day-to-day -day existence. It's a hand-to-mouth existence. Yeah, the, the perspective you bring is, is unreal. Mark, uh, thank you for your work. Thank you for sharing it with us. Uh, please be safe. We look forward to seeing you back at home. Sure, Brianna. Thank you very much for having me on. Appreciate it.